Remember, an isotope merely refers to the number of neutrons in the element. If we were to change the number of protons inside the atom, it would become a different element. The subscript tells you the element, due to this referring to the protons, and the superscript is the isotope. Carbon-12 means that there are 6 protons, since it's carbon and 6 neutrons, Mr. Samworth lectured the class. Han glanced over at the clock and saw that the bell would be ringing at any moment. Being able to focus on the class, and only noticing the time when it was close to being over, said a lot about the teacher's abilities to be engaging. One of the girls in the class raised her hand and spoke after being called on. Mr. Samworth, an element can have a differing number of neutrons to become an isotope, and many of them we have created such as the one you mentioned, Cobalt-60. She waited until Mr. Samworth nodded his head for her to continue. If we can create artificial isotopes, could we change an atom into another element? Couldn't we just take carbon-12 and turn it into gold-197? There was some snickering in the class, reacting to the question that classmate asked, but Mr. Samworth's reaction was thoughtful. This is something many civilizations have tried to acquire, such as the alchemists with turning lead into gold. Looking around the class, he continued, Though the question of turning another element into gold sounds like fantasy or science fiction, Naomi has asked a good question. Carbon is one of the most abundant elements in the known universe, so imagine what civilization would be like if we could take such a common item and change it into gold. The class was silent as they thought about such a thing happening. As Han listened to the teacher, he was fiddling around with his pencil. Hearing the question being asked, he grinned and casually covered the tip of the pencil which had a dull metallic look to it before transforming it back to graphite. A twinkling chime was heard in the hallway to indicate that first period was concluded. Remember to read the next chapter before coming to class tomorrow. You never know if there will be a pop quiz two days in a row or not. Mr. Samworth tried to sound ominous. That's not fair! A voice could be heard amongst the students as everyone was slowly filing out of the classroom. Han grinned at his teacher's incendiary words, admiring the level of trolling teachers were able to pull off. He imagined that teaching was a pretty tricky job of balancing work during the day and the work that likely leaked into off hours. Fortunately for teachers, the period seemed to favor them just by looking at their demeanor compared to teachers in the alternate version of Earth. Teachers in the alternate version were paid a paltry amount considering the societal benefits they brought to the table. Can you believe what Mr. Samworth said about there being a possibility of a quiz? Claire asked Hannah as the three of them left the classroom and hung out at Han's locker. I don't think that he was being serious, but I wouldn't mind there being another pop quiz. The one we took today wasn't tough, especially if you read the chapters, Hannah answered. Han opened the locker door and gathered his materials for his second, third, and fourth period classes. With the location of the first period, Han didn't feel it was necessary to carry around a backpack, but with the other rooms being on the second, fourth, and first levels, he didn't want to have to take a side trip. What did you think of the pop quiz, Han? Claire asked him. Closing his locker and putting on his pack, Han confessed, I think I missed three of the blanks, so I probably ended up with three incorrect answers. Even with three incorrect answers, you still walk away with a B plus, Hannah responded. This is why I tell you that you need to read and study more, Claire nagged. Han held up his hands to Claire, who glared at him before grudgingly giving him a five. You worry too much, he grinned at her. Who knows, maybe I'm secretly a great athlete and will have my future all set. If you turn out to be a super athlete, then I'll try out for the cheerleading squad, Claire rolled her eyes. Han walked away towards the stairwell, but turned around at the last moment. You're the one that said that, so remember your words. 
Opening the door with his back, he laughed, seeing her expression of annoyance. He waved at the two of them before heading down the stairs. Going down the stairs, Han chuckled to himself. Would I be a horrible person if I aimed to become the MVP of the football team, just to see if Claire keeps to her word? With her dark brown hair and figure, Han knew she would attract a lot of attention when she got into high school. Seeing the computer icon on the wall, he headed towards the door and opened it to leave the stairwell. The hallway was like the third floor with a number of students milling about. Going right, he walked up the hall, maneuvering his way through his classmates. His class was on the left, and getting closer he noticed Alex waiting by the door. Alex glanced up and noticed Han walking over to him. When Han reached him, he asked, So, how did chemistry go today? We had a pop quiz today, which was the typical fill in the blank that Mr. Samworth enjoys giving out. Han laughed dryly. Alex winced. Just another reason why I don't understand your reasoning for taking that class. It's weird how you're taking a chemistry and computer science class, a classmate who was in the same class commented. Throwing both hands into the air dramatically, Alex responded, You try explaining that to him. Using the hand close to Han, Alex smacked him on the chest. This guy is even planning on trying out for the football team. You're joking, right? The classmate asked. No, Amy, I'm not. I wish I were, but this guy seems to enjoy doing whatever he feels like, even if it's crazy. Alex said in an exasperated voice. Amy, I think Alex is worried about me not hanging out with him at the mall as much. Han grinned at the two of them. Amy giggled after hearing this. Instead of hanging out with you, maybe Hannah will be successful at dragging him to the library, she said to Han, glancing over at Alex. Both of them cracked up laughing at the look of horror on Alex's face. You three look like you're up to no good, the voice of their teacher, Miss Palmer, commented as she squeezed through the crowd of students waiting to get in. Just commenting on Alex's study habits, Miss Palmer, Amy said. Mr. Walters does seem to have a reputation towards studying, Miss Palmer said as she lifted up her wrist to allow the door to scan her bracelet. There was an audible click as the door unlocked. Opening the door, Miss Palmer said, I do hope you have completed the assignment for my class, Mr. Walters. Being nearest to the door, Han entered first, followed by Alex and Amy. Of course, Miss Palmer, you're my favorite teacher, Alex answered as he passed by her. Alex moved close to Han and whispered, Did you finish the assignment? I'm guessing you need to copy it, Han grinned. Like usual, Han headed towards the seat in the rear row. The layout of the classroom was different compared to his chemistry class. There were two columns of desks with a path running between them. Each row was aligned towards a large monitor at the front center of the room. At each station, there were three substantial looking monitors along with a keyboard and mouse. Sitting down at the computer, Han tapped on the keyboard and heard the familiar hum of the machine booting up. There was a clicking noise inside the monitor along with whirring sounds and the hum. These computers reminded him of the ancient computers from the 80s, which his previous father had owned. Alex crept around the monitor and asked, Could you wire me the file? Maybe I shouldn't so I can see the expression on Miss Palmer's face when she finds out you didn't complete the assignment, he teased. That's not even funny, Alex hissed. In a lower voice, he continued, You'd think that someone as pretty as her wouldn't be such a popsicle. He quickly lifted up his head to check where the teacher was at and sighed in relief. Glancing towards the monitors, Han saw that the computer had finished booting up. On the screens were green text listing out the homepage. In the center was a pop-up field with text asking for his username and password. Give me a second, 
and I'll wire you the assignment, he informed Alex, who was looking at him with puppy eyes. Alex's face split into a grin. I knew I could count on you, Alex said. Sure, sure. Han waved for Alex to leave him alone so he could focus. When Alex moved away, Han took off his backpack and placed it next to his chair. Casually, Han opened up a hidden pocket and removed something looking like a five floppy disk glued together. If he were to compare the two timelines, this version of Earth was pretty impressive with how far they were able to come with new technology. These computers were released several years ago by the Department of Military Technology, along with the network called The Wire. 